so much has happened in the last 24 hours, but really yesterday's big news beyond the tech earnings was that we still have this sticky inflation and it's causing the bond market to reprice yet again. How many times, if at all, does the Fed get to cut this year? Well, I think we're going to get some good guidance over the next few months, basically, uh, in, in terms of what the Fed's intention is. Obviously, we began the year with a very bullish bond market outlook. A two-year uh, really took the, the, the hit there. But I think the main theme here is, is the Fed about to change their whole paradigm? Again, we mentioned this before in ARC, that basically the Fed needs proof. They need real solid proof before they actually begin to cut. And the, and the story... The, the story has been since the beginning of the year, well, you know, the Fed has to cut. They have forward guidance, forward guidance, forward guidance, forward guidance. And the story now has shifted that, well, it isn't as clear a cut case of cutting. And actually, is there even a case of hiking? Well, I don't think we're even there yet. But I think what the main story is that maybe we should really pull back our expectations for a significant cut, perhaps a symbolic cut. But the real story is that maybe we push the first cut into Q4 and actually begin to have a more quarterly cut as opposed to a consistent cut. I think that's the story is. Now, if we get inflation numbers or uh, data that actually indicates inflation is actually might be picking up again, that might change the whole outlook and, uh, and force us to a very different scenario for the Fed. How did you read the GDP data? Because on the one hand, it did show slowing, which mm -hmm. might have been welcome to the Fed, except mm -hmm. that it was things like net imports that contributed to the lower GDP data, so maybe not as easy to interpret. Well, the, the, the GDP data is one part of the equation. I think the real part of the equation here for the Fed is only stick with the PCE, they're going to stick with the unemployment. That's the real key here for the Fed. The numbers GDP-wise, okay, we have a slowdown, we have a pickup. This is a secondary issue for the Fed. The real story for the Fed is can't they want to give forward guidance to the equity market. Remember, the, the main driver here was, was we're going into an election year. And the point being is that they don't want to disappoint the market in election year. And that, that might actually be the main reason why we're seeing equities pull back a bit, that maybe the Fed in an election year may not be able to cut and deliver on their promise in January. So the, the, the Fed will look at GDP, they'll look at employment, they'll look at uh, the, 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 the PMIs. And that's where the mix in data is coming in. It's not a clear-cut case of, you know, we have, a, we, we have inflation contained, we can move back and, and uh, watch as we cut rates lower. You've been focused on currencies quite a lot recently, right. and I'm curious as to your thoughts on the Bank of Japan. We yep. just, it, we've only had a few minutes really to react, sure. but we did see the yen continue to weaken. Well, again, this is, a, this is a clear case where the market gets ahead of itself once again. Uh, we, saw that, we saw that in the beginning of 2024 when the market expected the Bank of Japan to actually move out of negative rates. Well, it did. But is it something to, to write home about? Not really. It isn't significant because we, we have, we're talking about a, a bank who is basically not going to repeat the same mistake that they, they had done two decades ago. They're going to go very slow. And an environment where basically inflation is still patchy, given the last four years or three years of post-COVID pickup. You know, we still have the supply lines uh, disruptions. We still have an unregressed data set from history. So I think what the market is looking for here is, well, the BOJ talks very clearly that, that, that the rates could be too high in terms of the dollar yen that they, can, they may come and intervene. But is this a, a situation where the bank management will intervene to actually come in and reverse the trend? Unlikely. We, we've seen that before in the, one, in the 140 zone where the BOJ has come out and said this is too high. Well, it's about slowing down the pace. The B, BOJ is more concerned about the pace of the currency depreciation as opposed to the actual number. Now, we hit 165, 160, 155. That's not, not the issue. The issue is the pace. Is the pace fast enough now to talk about intervention? Not really, because we saw it happen earlier. We saw the market sell yen once again. And the main story again here is differentials. Mm. You have the BOJ at near zero, and you have the Fed now, actually, which, which is the treasuries are actually moving in a different direction. So the, the spread, once again, is widening. It isn't a case where the, where the spread is contracting, or like January. It's a case where this case is very clear that this is the best trade carry trade out there right now. We also have potential problems in China mm -hmm. with its currency, mm -hmm. right? Are you, how closely are you watching that? Very closely. Uh, main reason is because we entered the year again with the idea that China is a slowdown. We have the, the one of the main levers for the PBOC would actually be the uh, depreciation of their currency. That hasn't played out. What's happened is that you haven't lost money being long dollar China because of primarily the forwards, the, the carry that you uh, that you obtained there. But it's not been a, a slam dunk trade. That's been a very much of a, of a sticky trade. Now, if we do see China actually move that lever, which is unlikely in the short 
short term because right now what we're seeing is China is trying to preserve the integrity of the currency, trying to provide a second alternative to the dollar or the euro in terms of the fixed income market at least. I think that's really the one that we're watching for. Now, if we do see the market uh, capitulate, that could be a very clear indication that China is more worried about their economy than we, we thought before. Said, what happens if the Fed can't cut soon, if it's December, maybe even if it goes into next year, and it's one of the last central banks to cut? And this is the, this is the, this is the main question. Does the ECB go first? Yeah. You know, we've seen other banks It's looking move very in. likely now. So right? if the ECB goes first, that really puts the, 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 the dollar in an unprecedented position where actually they've seen the cycle move forward and they're, they're still up there in terms of race. I think we can see dollar, uh, euro dollar really rally and down to maybe, maybe 103, 102, even parity is possible. But if we do see a situation where cuts are off the table completely, you know, uh, this is not the situation where uh, we, we see GDP pick up, we see unemployment sticky, and we see, well, you know what, that, that, this is, that was a recession. That was it. It's over. And now we're, we're going to a new growth stage. Well, in that situation, we can see dollar pick up quite considerably. Now, again, un this will not be very comfortable for the Fed, given that we're going into election cycle. But it is, and it would, it, would, it, would, it would require them to have a lot of forward guidance. So you will see Fed members come out and say, well, listen, maybe things aren't as uh, deflationary as we thought before. Maybe this, this is going to be a, a longer state of inflation. Maybe we've moved to a new cycle. So the Fed's very good in giving us forward guidance, a forward uh, indication of what their intention to be. So I don't expect to see a massive shift, but we will see a dribbling of Fed speak coming out, changing their, their, their views.